everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Jordan. Is this your first time here with us? If so, we would love to get to know you. Please click on the I'm New button or click on the Connect With Us button on fbcwimberly.com. Please check out our website to find out what's happening at FBC Wimberley. You'll find some great resources including group materials and individual materials that complement the sermon. We would love to connect with you. Make sure and comment during the broadcast or email scott at fbcwimberley.com to let us introduce ourselves and get to know you. And just one more thing. Thank you for your faithful giving that supports the everyday work of this church and our work of ministry both locally and globally. You can give by clicking on the blue button on the top right corner of our homepage or text ETERNITY to 73256. Now let's worship together. Hey, good morning, FBC family. We're glad you're joining online. Come on, we're going to sing. We're going to worship together. I invite you to lift this song, lift this anthem with us today as we sing together. In the darkness we were waiting without hope 
without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the world From the throne of endless glory To the cradle in the dirt So one of my biggest problems, hi, Scott Weatherford. One of my biggest problems is that I don't listen. I don't listen. If, I'm, if I am listening, I'm really not paying attention. And that's a sad admission. But uh, most of the relationship troubles I have is because I'm really not paying attention. I'm not listening. I don't have a hearing problem. What I have is a selfishness problem, that I want to be self-centered. Now, the biggest reason I don't listen is that I am self-absorbed, arrogant, entitled, and distracted. Okay, all right. So, enough about me. What if that changed? What if that changed? 
what would I hear that would change my life? What if it was I was so in tune with the people in my life that when they spoke, they listened, not just hearing, but understanding and responding. What would Tara, my sweet wife, think if I actually listened to her? Not just hearing the words out of her mouth, but seeing the content of her heart and understanding. What would my kids be like? What would my grandkids, what would you as a church members look like? What if you actually listened to the voice of God? Just think about it. If I was so into with God that I knew his voice, and I responded according to his instructions, his directions, and his corrections. What if I did that? Hmm. I hear people say this, well, God told me, and I've always been skeptical of that statement. How do I know that it's God? Why is it that God told you something involving me when he could have just told me, talked to me directly? Just, just say, you know, I've had people say, well, God told me to tell you. Well, you know, I'm right here. God can speak to me as he wants to. And, you know, sometimes I have those kind of things, too. That I feel like God needs me to tell you something. And I have a rule of three. If it comes to my three times, I was supposed to say it, but I never say, God told me to tell you this. I say, you know, that, maybe consider this. This is something that keeps coming to mind. Maybe, you know, and I kind of feel like it's from God, but I don't tell people that. Huh. What if that happened to me? Today we're starting a new series in Genesis, and it's been a lot of fun so far. And I hope you've learned some stuff about preference, about obedience, about responding to God in faith, about sin, about relationships. I hope, hope all of those things have come together. If you missed any of that, you can go back online and watch those again, Knowing God from the Start. But we start this new relationship with this new series about knowing God and His faithfulness. And this series will take us all the way to Easter. So we're starting in February, and we're all going all the way to April. So it's going to be a kind of a long series, I think eight or nine weeks. But we'll, I think we're going to enjoy it. We're going to take a deeper look at how God displayed his faithfulness to the lives of several people in various circumstances. And we're going to start with Abraham, or Abram. And he's kind of an unlikely choice. Now, I'm going to talk to you about him and, and who he was. And as I studied him and I read some extra biblical stuff about him, I found out more than I ever knew, and I want to share that with you. I'm excited about that. He was a descendant of Noah's son, Shem, S-H-E-M. And, and, and it was through the descendants of Shem that the Hebrew people came into being. Abraham is considered the first Hebrew. He's the first of the Hebrews. Now, he's the father of three major religions, so kind of the fountainhead, and Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. When God spoke to Abraham, Abraham, his name was Abram, and he was living in a pagan city, and he worshipped the moon god. Well, they worshipped the moon god. He didn't, but they did. However, his eighth generational grandfather, Shem, S-H-E-M, was still alive when Abraham was born. Hmm. I'm sure that Abram had heard of the great flood and the great god from his grandfather, his papa, Shem. The stories were told around steaming bowls of food consumed around family fires about God and his faithfulness. Even though Abram grew up in a pagan environment, God was preparing and preserving his message of salvation through the generations. I'm sure Abram heard the promise God made in the garden of the one who would bruise the serpent's head. I'm sure. So when God spoke to Abram, he heard his voice. Why? The voice of God is always greater than the culture around you. Let me say that again. The voice of God is always greater than the culture around you. What Abraham didn't know was the voice of God would lead him on a great adventure that's really still unfolding. Abraham learned of God's faithfulness and love from his papa. And he knew God could be trusted, so he listened. And he responded in obedience. Well, I'm like Abram. I want to hear from God and I want to follow him, the voice of God. But first I have to learn to listen because I got a listening problem. Father, I pray that we will learn to be in tune with your voice and we will respond in obedience when you call it to us and we'll look at your faithfulness in the life of Abraham and we'll find that solidarity with this founding father. And I thank you for what you're going to reveal to us in this time. And I pray you speak through me, not me, but you. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. So let's jump in. 
Let me read Genesis 12, 1 through 8. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your land, your relatives, and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who treat you with contempt, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. And he took his wife Sarah the nep and his nephew Lot and all the possessions they had accumulated and all the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Cana. And when they came to the land of Cana, get this what Abraham did. Abram passed through the land to the site of Shechem, at the oak of Moron. And they, at that time the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. For there... He had moved to the hill country east of Bethel, or the house of God, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. He built an altar to the Lord there, and he called on the name of the Lord that Abraham journeyed by stages to the Nebia. So here's the thoughts, okay? Here's the thoughts. In order to hear the voice of God, you have to know the Lord. Okay, this is big because, you know, you're reading this passage and you're going, Okay, Abram's like doing all this thing. Why? Because he knew the Lord. How did I know that he knew the Lord? Let's talk about this. I've been taught, and maybe you have too, that Abraham was a pagan, that he didn't know God, that he lived in this, you know, Ur of the Chaldees, they worshiped the moon God, that if he was a pagan, how would he even know that God spoke to him? In fact, as I was preparing these talks, I was talking to Tara one night, and he was sitting in our living room. We're talking theology, which is always a lot of fun to do with Pastor Scott, talking theology in his living room. And uh, Tara was just really excited about this. And I said, you know, and I asked her a question out loud. I said, if Abraham was a pagan, how in the world would he even know his God is speaking to him? And she goes, that doesn't make any sense. I go, you're right. So I got to dig it around and found it out. He just lived in a pagan culture. He wasn't a pagan. And we'll push into that. Abraham had come from a long line of those who loved God and knew God. Although he lived in a pagan culture, Abraham followed God. Why? He had heard about God and the evidence of God through the lives of his grandparents. His papa Shem, eight generations back, still alive. Abraham, under that influence, story after story after story after story after story told. Why is this important? Because it's important to share your God stories to your kids. Abraham, Abram, knew the voice of God because his papa had taught him to listen. Listen. This is so big. Listen to me, parents. You're trying to pursue a scholarship for your kid in sports when that is so short-lived and so short-sighted when you should be teaching them to hear the voice of God. But how can you teach them to hear the voice of God if you don't know you know how I learned to listen to God? To listen to my dad and his dad. And I didn't know my great-great-grandfather, but understand that Richard Weatherford, my great-great-grandfather, loved Jesus as well. And my mother's side of the family is a Baptist preacher in successive generations. I remember listening to my uncle Emeril pray, and he would literally pray in such a personal way that it changed my heart, passed from generation to generation, the knowledge of the Holy One, until I heard about him, then I heard and came to know him and heard his voice because I'd lived under a generational blessing of godliness. Oh, that's how Abram knew. Well, what does the voice of God sound like? Well, let me talk to you. God's voice often sounds like my voice, but it's not a normal to my character or my thought processes. This is why prayer is so vital to your life. Uh, God speaks to us, and it often sounds like our voice, but it's usually not our character or not our assignment. And I can tell you time after time after time, even in recent days where I felt the voice of God speaking to me, not I'm some kind of mystical prophet, no. Encouragement and words of affirmation and words from God through his word, through scripture, and through other circumstances that are validated by scripture, that's the voice of God. God's voice will always line up with God's word. If the voice of God in your life does not line up with God's word, it's not God. It's not God. Always lines up. During this time of pandemic, I've heard these unhinged prophets talking about nonsense. 
that does, does not line up with God. Does not line up with God, His Word. It's not God. It's not God. God's voice will be echoed by those who love you and love God as well. They will speak affirming things to you. And God's voice will be affirmed by circumstances that line up in your life. Prayer, Scripture, other believers, and circumstances reveal God's word to you. If you don't know God, the first time he speaks to you will be for you to come and know him through the wooing of the Spirit. He'll say, you need to trust me. You need to do this. You need to give your life to me. That's the first time he speaks to you. If you've heard that voice and you've never responded, respond because God is speaking to you. And that response launches every other message he'll speak to you in your life. If you never heard from God, and ask yourself, have I really ever trusted him? Because he's longing to speak. He's longing to reveal himself. Here's the second thing I want you to hold on to this, this account. God calls you to himself, and when you respond, he assigns you for his glory. The call of Abraham was to follow God. That God showed him where to go because he had called him. Abraham didn't ask for clarity. He just said, yes, and let's go. Now, in my book, Sifted Leadership, I talk about the difference between the call of God and the assignment of God. God calls you once to himself. Then he assigns you where he wants you to be in the future. When you say yes to God, you give up your rights. You surrender your rights. We don't teach that in the church. We add God to a list of things. Instead of saying, you become the Lord of our lives, we, we add God to our list of preferences. But God's not that way. Now listen, when Abraham, he didn't let distractions keep him from following God. He was 75 years old. He could have said to God, I'm too old, my knees are bad, get somebody else. He didn't. He said, let's go. He didn't know where he was going, and that didn't matter. He said, let's go. Faith was his guide. And faith is always the guide for those who follow God. We trust him, and we follow him. He rarely reveals to us the details because his desire is not the destination. His desire is for us to know him and to follow him. Proverbs says this, Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding in all your ways. Know him and he will make your path straight. We often confuse the call of God and his assignment. God calls us to follow us. Then he assigns us according to his will and for his glory. You know, he called me to be a pastor, and he assigned me to be your pastor. I'm grateful for both of those things. And that's what God does. God called me to save me, then he assigned me as a pastor to use me for his glory, and he's doing the same thing he, for you. He places you where he wants you so you can be effective for his, his service. Now, I've got this, and I want you to see it. When we say yes to Jesus, we surrender our rights to location, vocation, comfort, and prosperity. God wants your yes before he asks. And that's the story of Abraham. Here's the, the third thing. Listening and responding to God changes the course of your life. <clears throat> and so it did with Abraham. God promised Abraham that, he would, that God would do what only God could do. He would make him the father of a great nation. He's 75. He's married to a woman who's 10 years younger. She's 65 at least, maybe even a little younger than that. She's never had children. 65-year-old women usually don't bear children. He tells him, you're going to be the father of a great nation. You're 75. Your wife is 65. You're going to be the father of a great nation. Okay, going to take God to do this. Now get this. 25 years later, Sarah gets pregnant. Yeah. Abraham's 100 and Sarah is 90. God's faithful. And God's going to do things in your life that only God can do. What? Because God is faithful. Huh. Your response to God, my response to God, 
evidence in Abraham's life and his responding to God launches a blessing that goes beyond myself. Listen to what it says in Exodus 20. Do not bow down and worship them, that's other gods, and do not serve them, that's other gods. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, bringing consequences of the father's iniquity to the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate him, hate me, but showing faithful love to a thousand generations for those who love me and keep my commandments. I'm going to choose to listen to God and follow God so I can be a fountainhead, a blessing to a thousand generations. I want to tell you something. Scott Weatherford is living under the generational blessing of my fathers who were before me. And my kids, regardless of their response and station life, are living under the blessing of God because of the faithfulness of their fathers. That's the promise of God. Abraham listened in faith, responded in obedience, and lived in the blessing of God. His adventure with God was not without adversity or struggle. However, he never faced life on his own. He lived in the goodness of God. There's a song we sing about all my life you've been faithful, all my life you've been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And I cry every time I sing that because I know that that's my life story. That though life has been full of adversity and struggle and trial, God has been faithful. And when we say yes to him, he launches that blessing of his presence and his faithfulness today. We gather here on this website, this, this online today, because of this one man, Abraham, believed and obeyed. And it launched the blessing of Jesus Christ to us. The adventure of Abraham is still unfolding today. And this is our adventure. That Christ has come because Abraham said yes. So here's a question. Will you listen to the voice of God and follow? Will you say yes to Jesus before he asks? Will you quit debating with him and surrender to him? Will you hear his voice, respond in obedience, and live by faith, and find the blessing of God? That is the story of a man who listened. I want to be like him. Father, thank you for what you've said to us in your word today. And I pray that we will make the adjustments we need to hear your voice. And Father, I go back to the question I asked earlier. If you've never heard your voice, do we really know you? And I pray right now through the power of your Holy Spirit, you're whispering to those who've never trusted you, hey, you need to give your life to Jesus today. Today's your day. Respond in faith. And I pray, Holy Spirit, as you whisper that truth, to the hearts of those who hear that, that they will respond in this prayer, Jesus, I'm yours. I give my life to you. This is the gospel, the good news. I give my life to you. And I will live for you for all my life. And Father, I pray that we as a people of God will be found faithful to you. Say yes before anything. Following in faith, trusting, and seeing that you are good. And I pray this in your name. Amen. I want you to listen to this last song and respond. And if you prayed with us, let us help you. Let us take next steps. We're in this together. We are a church that builds life to honor God. That means connecting, growing, serving, and sharing, honoring God. We want to be disciples of Jesus, and that means you. So let's be like Abraham and respond with yes. And let's go on the great adventure all for Jesus. I love you guys. Listen to this last song. And oh, by the way, thank you for your giving. It changes the world. Thank you as we continue to know the faithfulness of God. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. I will.
joining us today for this gathering. Uh, we love the online family. I'm Scott Tidwell. I'm the online pastor. We appreciate you being here with us today. Reach out. Let us know you're here. Email. Drop us a note. Comment in the comments. We would love to be here for you if you have needs.